Hey everyone, and welcome to another Tony for Be Not Afraid. I mean, Tony for you. Today's SMT lore video will be all about angels, specifically the nine orders of angels directly serving Yodhevate in the heavens. According to Christian angelology, there are nine orders of angels organized in three layers, spheres, or choirs in relation to their proximity to God. The same is shown to be the case in Shin Megami Tensei. The orders are not organized by power if you are thinking that, simply the likelihood of them interacting with either the human realm or Yodhe Vadhe directly. The top layer are those directly serving under God, the middle being angels that hold some power or bestow blessings over the human realm indirectly, and the bottom layer are angels that are the closest in proximity to humans, at times being directly involved in their affairs. For the top orders we have seraphim, cherubim, and thrones, middle orders we have dominions, virtues, and powers, and for the bottom orders we have principalities, archangels, and guardian angels. This video will only be talking about these nine orders of angels, so sadly I will not be going in depth over the specifically named angels like Mastima, the four archangels, or Metatron. There's enough on them to warrant their own videos. So without any further ado, let's start with the top order. Seraphim, or Seraphs for short, are six-winged beings that fly around the throne of God crying Holy, 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 the triple invocation of holiness. Often depicted as being aflame with a love for God, and are constantly chanting the Trisagion, a holy prayer that goes like this, Holy God, Holy Strong, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. In the book of Isaiah, they are depicted to have two wings covering their faces, two covering their feet, and two used for flying. Even despite their faces covered, their voices are said to be so powerful as to kill a human and shatter glass. Their constant burning flames, depending on the source, are said to be the flames used in the assimilation of those below, purifying them with burning and all-consuming flame and by unhidden, unquenchable, radiant, and enlightening power dispelling and destroying the shadows of darkness. Their role is to be the closest in proximity to God and maintain perfect order around Him. I know I said before the orders weren't placed by power, but Seraphim are said to be the most powerful of the angels and the demon is reflected very well in SMT. Looking at the design, aside from the multiple faces, this is spot on. Their level is always 80 plus in the games, and they have high affinity for and drain fire, which makes sense. For those wondering, the Hebrew lettering on their fans don't mean anything as far as I know, but remember the name of the thrice holy prayer, Trisagion? Well, there is a skill used by them to deal severe fire damage, lending credence to their powerful voices as them saying the prayer in and of itself is enough to spout purifying flames onto their opponent. Cherubim are first mentioned in the Bible through Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel has a vision of a cherubim, and he describes it as a tetramorph being with four heads representing each domain of God, being a lion, ox, human, and eagle. The torso and hands of a human and the feet of a calf make up the body of a cherubim, and four eye-covered wings, two extending upwards holding up God's throne, and two stretching downwards covering their body. The domains represented by each head are wild animals for the lion, domestic animals for the ox, humans for man, and birds for eagle. They're described as burning with such holy light that wherever they move, strikes of lightning shoot out from their body along with every color imaginable. They wield flaming swords used to protect the entrance to heaven as well as the entrance to the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were exiled. Ezekiel's vision describes cherubim as well as the next angel in this lair underneath the throne of God itself. In SMT, they're described as God's chariot which lines up with biblical texts pretty well, as they are literally the angels responsible for guiding and moving God's throne in extremely close proximity to him. In the Old Testament, when God ordered a throne to be built for him on earth, Moses built the Ark of the Covenant, or the Mercy Seat, an ornate golden chest containing the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments and the lid being adorned with two cherubim. God spoke to Moses from between two cherubim on the Ark's cover, Cherubim are the ones responsible for God's movements in heaven as well as on earth, and close guard to yod heh heavenly throne. In SMT, cherubim had an interesting way of being depicted. Early on, they were sphinxes with four wings, then became metallic spheres with four heads and four wings, then finally deciding on this robed figure sitting on a throne of their own, carved with the other three heads of the cherubim surrounded by clouds. While none are exactly perfect, Devil Summoner's metallic sphere design is oddly enough the most accurate depiction, but the newest one is the most aesthetically pleasing, I'd say. Well, now you know this is what an actual cherubim looks like. Not this. Though I'm sure you already knew, playing enough SMT games. 
thrones are the last of the highest heavenly choir, depicted alongside the cherubim in Ezekiel's vision underneath the throne of God. They are four wheels within wheels in constant motion. Much like the cherubim, they have four wings, two to fly and two to cover themselves. They are living embodiments of God's justice, having eyes throughout the entirety of their wheels viewing every direction and emanating with God's holy light from the center of their rings. Thrones are one of the only angels not said to be humanoid, as is common for angels as they are made in God's image, much like humans. Despite this, they are still sentient and intelligent, said to be incredibly humble and able to dispense justice objectively under the teachings of the Most Holy. The center of the throne is a fire, from which God orders cherubim to come reach within to pull out holy burning coals and spread them throughout a household deserving of blessing as depicted in Ezekiel chapter 10. He describes the thrones as being so high that they were dreadful. He then even describes them as being beyond the firmament, so their size could go beyond even the curvature of the earth. It can be gleaned from the beginning chapters of Ezekiel that thrones are responsible for the transport of souls themselves. With quotes like, whichever the spirit was to go, they went, thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. From this, seemingly, souls are collected within the rings of the thrones encompassing the entirety of the sky and brought up to the kingdom of heaven. Their bodies are the bridge between the human realm and the celestial plane. Cherubim seem to be responsible for carrying God's physical form throughout the kingdom of heaven and escorting his manifestation on earth, while thrones are responsible for carrying the souls of living creatures up to heaven past the cherubim guard and to be judged directly under the throne of God. The throne's size and appearance seem to be variable, as angels are confirmed to be able to change their appearance at will depending on the situation. Some Christian theologians believe the elders described in the book of Revelations encircling God's throne to be a form taken by the wheels in the book of Ezekiel. In SMT, they're consistently depicted as a single burning wheel of fire with the jet black robed figure fixed within. I believe they were going for a mixture of the original design with the wheel with heavenly fire along with the interpretation that the elders in the book of Revelations are thrones as well. While I would have liked to see Kaneko's depiction of these enormous eyeball covered wheels carrying souls within them, this is a great in-between. Honestly, this is one of my favorite demons in all of SMT with its lore and depiction, and a great way to end the first layer of the heavenly order of angels. The heavenly servants of the first layer see to God's worship directly and communicate his will to the angels beneath them. The middle layer are the heavenly governors of creation. They hold responsibilities that encompass heaven and earth, as well as hold sovereignty or lordship over the angels below them. The middle layer has very little to go on with sources, so I'll do my best to explain them concisely. Dominions also known as lordships, are angels in the second layer regulated to assigning tasks to angels under them. Sources for dominions are very few in the Christian and Hebrew texts, but they are often depicted as rulers and judges carrying out God's will with their angelic subjects to mediate the affairs on earth. If conflict arises, such as war, a dominion will take physical form on rare occasion to impart wisdom and good judgment onto the most devout participant. They are often depicted with a golden staff in one hand and the seal of God in the other, giving off a very royal air. Their domain is a subject of speculation. Some believe dominions to have sovereignty over specific areas on earth assigned by God himself, while others believe them to have sovereignty over the celestial plane, delegating angels to carry out the will of the Lord. In SMT, they are depicted as robed angels holding scales, often seen as a symbol of justice, in one hand, and a book seemingly with hieroglyphs on the cover in the other. A fairly simple depiction of an angel, but one that does the job very well. This is what I imagine when I think of an angel. The soul hacker's design is very different however, with a head affixed to a metallic tube wearing a corset, chains falling off the side and a shadowed head with glowing eyes behind it giving off a very different, far more intimidating vibe. This one is very interesting and is clearly depicted as an intimidating ruler. Virtues, known for their mastery over the elements. They're known as angels of nature and are responsible for strengthening human's faith in God and aiding in miracles. Whenever a human prays for their faith in God to be bolstered, it is the virtues that carry out that aid. A virtue's task in heaven is to watch over the movements of the other heavenly creatures. I suppose they're like heaven's security guards. They're also most often credited as the angels responsible for instilling courage and valor onto individual humans. When they take physical form, they're said to have a visage of being melded by the very cosmos themselves, and it changes with each task given to them by God. Virtues are said to be governed by the Archangel Raphael, 
and are depicted as the angels most responsible for healing, preserving nature, instilling a virtuous spirit, and small-scale miracles. An ever-changing celestial body maintaining peace in heaven and on earth. In SMT, they're most often depicted as a glossy, transparent, statue-like figure with a sacred heart in their midsection. A great interpretation of them having melded forms while still maintaining a humanoid shape most angels have. Powers are the final of the middle choir, and with it, the only angel whose sole purpose is to hold back the forces of evil. They are wholly dedicated to restraining demons and agents of Lucifer. Powers are in constant physical confrontation with fallen angels or demons, often thought to be the guards of heaven's borders as well as the crossings between the planes of hell and earth, though demons still make their way to earth as either side's power is not absolute. Despite their constant fighting, powers are also known to be record keepers and distribute power to humans physically as well as impart wisdom on subjects such as theology and philosophy. Powers are the judges of mankind's ability to wield power and see to the ugly side of humanity's nature to fight off wickedness and temptation. Trusted advisors to the middle layer of the angelic order and policy makers, they're often depicted fully clad in armor with some sort of martial weapon. In SMT, they are red armor clad humanoids with shields and spears, usually mid-game demons with high physical strength. A fair depiction of these angels I can't complain about, though I don't know what the art on their shield is supposed to mean. Each angel of the middle layer covers a different domain. Dominion's objective judgment of humans and angels alike, virtue's merciful miracles bestowed to those of great faith, and power's protection of humans and angels from the forces of evil. They are agents in the middle of heaven and earth, with duties regarding both planes of existence. The third and final layer are the earthly messengers. These angels have duties that directly involve humans and their affairs. Principalities Angels responsible for guiding and protecting specific nations, groups of people, or institutions like the church. Some see to divine ministry over bands of angels, and some assist directly shepherding the people. Often depicted wearing crowns and carrying a scepter, their duty is to carry out the will of the angels in the upper sphere. Think of them as angelic middle management, directly overseeing the people of earth and angels attending to them. Principalities are educators and guardians of Earth, and give inspiration to the people in things such as art and science. They represent the most small-scale rulers and reside mostly in the realm of man, presiding over specific areas making sure the ministry thrives. They provide inspiration and motivation to specific humans or groups of humans to do great things under God. Due to their rule over man, they're often said to be the most plentiful of the fallen angels cast out from heaven alongside Lucifer but we'll talk more about that in a later video. In SMT, principalities are armor-clad angels with an ornate spiked crown and sword under their cloak. The scepter they wield is tipped with what looks like a monstrous liturgical vessel or simply a crucifix, a great depiction of an angel that rules over sections of humanity. Archangels are tricky to talk about, as there are several archangels in the game. The generic Archangel you can find at fairly low levels, and the named Archangels such as Michael and Gabriel, which hold immense power and are literally God's right and left hand agents respectively. For the generic Archangels, they are ministers and messengers between God and humanity. Many believe the term Archangel to be interpreted incorrectly when discussing these types of angels, as they are believed to be the frontline generals and primary warrior race of heaven, in either constant war with the forces of Lucifer, or messengers between heaven and earth. The word Archangel comes from the Greek word Arche, meaning first in rank, and Angelos, meaning messenger or envoy. They're not what you may immediately think when you hear the word Archangel. They're rather generals of armies or head messengers of God. Coincidentally, outside of SMT, the only named Archangel to be recognized by all denominations of Christianity is Michael, with Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael being disputed but still existing in associated holy texts. With all that being said, SMT does a great job of interpreting the Archangels properly. They're fully armored head to toe, always prepared for war. Distinct from the other named Archangels, and aside from their wings, virtually indistinguishable from an ordinary high-ranking knight, signifying their position as only a step above the next angel on the third layer. Speaking of... Angels, sometimes called guardian angels or plain angels, are messengers or envoys of God and the lowest rank in the order of celestial beings, but also the most recognizable. These are the angels most involved with humanity by far and vary in function. It's difficult to confirm if these are a class of angel themselves or a catch-all term for the species. In fact, as I mentioned before, angel is simply derived from the word angelos, meaning messenger, so it's not even the name of the species. 
What we call angels in the final section of the third choir are specifically messengers assigned to each human, Christian or not, and protect them individually from wickedness. I suppose they're the celestial form of the human conscience, delicately nudging humans on the path of righteousness. They're often depicted as beautiful creatures with halos and lily-white wings, but they lack a physical form and often disguise themselves as ordinary humans. These common angels are so adept at living amongst people, they're often indistinguishable from everyday humans. So be careful, the guy you flipped off in traffic might be an angel, and he has some choice words about you for God to hear. When you hear of humans receiving messages from God, such as angels appearing to the shepherds letting them know Jesus was born, or prophets receiving the word of God, it's this classification of angels. Despite them being known as simply angels, this order is still extremely powerful, and they will do anything in order to carry out their task given to them by God, whether it's to deliver a message or protect the human or humans they are assigned to. And it's said that there's an angel for each human that has ever lived. Their depiction in SMT is fairly accurate, with them being robed humanoids with wings and halos. Can't complain. That's where I'll end this long video on the angelic order in SMT. Don't you feel just a little bit more holy? I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Not many people know about the hierarchy of angels, so I hope I could teach you at least the basics. Leave a comment letting me know your thoughts and favorite of the heavenly choirs. And leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for tuning in to this SMT lore, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.